Hey everyone, this is Beyond Dead Viking. I want to talk to you about this game. It is called Reign of Man. Uh, Reign of Man is a game for two to five people. Uh, each person will be controlling a kingdom, and they are all at war against each other. They're kind of racing to become the most developed, the most powerful uh, kingdom in the land so they can claim control over everyone else. Uh, this is a game that has very few uh, rules. It is really straightforward, uh, but it has wonderfully deep gameplay and very, very satisfying uh, mechanisms to 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 uh, play and to act upon. So let me uh, let me show you how to play uh, Reign of Man, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you a little bit more uh, about why my game group and I have been enjoying this one. All right, cool. All right, let's learn how to play Reign of Man. So each player is going to get this little player board, and they're going to cover up every single spot in there with an army token of the opposite side, the black side, not the uh, color of their army. Every spot but these three locations there. You can might maybe see that those three locations both say action on them. On each one of your turns, you're allowed to take one action, and obviously you're able to take the action uh, like that, that is uncovered and what you can use. Um, sometimes you can do more than one action if you do expand. If you manage to get all the way over here, you can see plus one action per empire. Um, you know, it's for every empire you control, you get extra actions. An empire is actually designated by the different colors. It might be difficult to see, uh, but you know, there's like this is an empire, this is an empire, this is an empire. Then there's three here, one, two, and three. And so, if you can control all of that and multiple areas of that, and you can get more actions for those empires, you know, things like that kind of have a synergy and work together. So the idea of the game is is that um, one, you you want to be able to like crush your enemies underneath your heel, but that it, you could theoretically win the game uh, by uh, you know wiping everybody else off the map. Uh, but actually, the way you normally win the game, <laughs> long before that would happen, is you win by getting three victory points. So you get three victory points by uncovering these three locations on your player board. One, two, and three. Now you might be saying, well, okay, if I just go ahead and just start doing developments, and I'll, say, I'll show you how that works. Just an action, basically. Um, what, what prevents me from just taking that action every single turn to unlock that? Well, if you're not doing something else, where like putting armies on the board, or mobilizing them, or you know, try attacking your neighbors, and what have you, uh, you're not going to have like any defense, and so people are then going to, if they, you think they think you're getting close to winning, and they think that uh, uh, they can take you out, they're going to go ahead and attack you and take you out and prevent you from winning in that direction. So anyway, there you go. Um, so on your turn, uh, you you. Each, each person will, once you start, each person will pick a starting empire, and they'll put a token on each one of those locations. And then they'll, they'll start their playing board, like I already did, and then the first player uh, will go ahead, whoever, you determine the first player, however, and they'll take one of these cards, these little tarot-sized cards here, and then you'll notice there's a spot that says, in two turns, in one turn, this turn. And they show an event. So this is the event that says, um, take an extra action for each complete empire you control at the beginning of your turn. So that is the one that's here. So next turn, what's going to happen is this is going to slide down here. We're going to draw one next turn. And then that would... So two turns from now, this event is going to take place. So it's kind of one of those things where you can plan for it. So on your turn you're going to take one action. And then you have these three spots open. The top one for civilization is unlock one development. That's pretty simple. You just take one of these tokens off, and then you put it to the side and flip it over to show that you have that. Now, that can be an army. If you mobilize or, or like place an army, you can then place an army on a location that you control by, by putting it on the board. The next action down here, it says mobilize one territory. Pretty simple. You pick a territory, every army that's on the territory, you can then move it. If you move it into an enemy spot, you then have to have a battle at that point. You you do mobilize everything. You don't have to move all your uh, like all the armies that are on that location, but you you can if you want to mobilize the armies on a spot. And the bottom one is like place one army. So if you have this and you can then place it by taking that action, you just put it on the board in a location. Very, very simple. Now, as you get more developments, you're going to get more abilities and so and and some passive abilities as well. Um, you know, so like you it, by getting these, you can roll more dice. You roll three dice for attacking, roll three dice for defending, uh, things like that. Um, you know, like this one, you're able to, it's an action 
and you can mobilize two territories when you take that action. Here it says you can place two armies and so on and so forth. This is just an escalation process. The actual abilities and the things that you're doing are still uh, very uh, normal, if you will. I mean, they're very, uh, they're just an extenuation on a theme, uh, but, you know, they're just, they're more powerful of those abilities. Now, uh, so, like, the next turn, you like, the same exact thing happens. You turn this card over. Now we have Literacy. Um, all players must use a civilization, civilization action on their turn. So then we know that's coming out. So then finally we get to this spot. If you control a complete empire for each one, you get an extra ability. And so then you turn the section over. Uh, insurrection. Play proceeds counterclockwise from the command, command player this turn. So, once again, something that you have to plan for. And things like that. And so, and these uh, these little things here is like, um, Arrow of the Blade, Emperor's Overring 4 military at the beginning of the turn, take an extra action. So, like, if you knew that was coming, you could, like, push to have that. Um, Long Summer. Same thing as this, but agriculture. Enlightenment. Any developments at rank 1, move to rank 2 now. So, you just, like, gain all of that. And so these are all like, and these, oh, this one's good, is the pandemic. Roll a die and remove all player armies from those territories in every empire now. Each one of these spots has, like, a number on it. And so what you would do is you'd take a die and you'd roll it. And so any spot that had a 4 on it, like this one right there, you'd kill off any armies that are in that location. So there's that kind of randomness to the game as well as far as, but once again, it's something you can plan for. You see it coming. Now, combat is really, really simple. Uh, you just basically, if you have multiple armies, so like if you have like these three armies and like, you know, and they moved into, you know, this location over here, they mobilized over and let me just like place these two guys over here like so, you're going to just roll dice and, and compare. Unless you have an ability that breaks ties, ties, nothing happens. And you're just going to compare uh, the dice to each other. And so, like, you, the attacker rolls the dice. And if you've played Risk, you can probably guess what's going to happen here as far as the dice go. And in this case, you'd match up the dice. And for every one that you beat, you just destroy the army. Um, all There is no retreating in combat. You have to fight to the death. Um, and once then you just... All armies that are killed are returned and placed by the by the side of the game board to be placed later. Um, you know, and that is very simplistic. I, I like the combat. Um, in a weird way, it reminds me a, a little bit of a game called Melee that I really really enjoyed. Uh, you know, it, I mean, which did, that didn't have dice, but it's just quick and brutal, and it's over with, and 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 you can move on to the next turn. This isn't a situation where in some games where you'd have mountain, you're not gonna have mountains of armies where you're just rolling dice for like ten minutes, you know, to see what happens. It's like you, these battles, yes, you do have to continue. There's no retreating, but they are quick and they're over and they're done with relatively quickly. So there you go. I mean, that's 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 the entire game. You each person takes one action on their turn. And then they move forward, and you're just going to... But there's the game beyond the game, obviously. There's going to be people talking to each other, making negotiations, saying, hey, don't attack me here, I want to attack you here. Let's, you know, let's, you know, these two... You, know, I'm going to attack you over here unless, like, you promise that, you know, to do this. You, you promise to attack Orange over in this location so you can weaken him so I can take him out. Okay, fine, I agree to that. That kind of thing. There is that negotiation element of the game. And plus, like I said, it's just... It is kind of a throwback, if you will, uh, to kind of a simpler era of, of area control games. But this is this is the type of game that I grew up on playing and playing, and it was a very welcome um, uh, a rehash or welcome a revisit, if you will. And and I, I like the the simplicity and and the straightforward nature that this game provides me. So uh, there you go. That's how you play Random Man. Uh, let me tell you more about what I think of it uh, in my conclusion, which I'll do right now. All right, thank you very much for sitting through the gameplay portion of Reign of Man. That didn't take very long. Um, there basically is, like, two rules to the game. Uh, take an action and then roll some dice if you're having a combat. That, that, that's, the, that's the long and short of it. However, don't let that fool you. As I stated in the introduction uh, and, and elsewhere, I mean, it's just the game has some has a lot of depth to it. It has a lot of uh, gumption to it. It is, yes, I mean, uh, allusions to classic area control games of our youth are, are not completely incorrect to be made. But there is so much more about this game because it isn't just 
just about conquest. It's about developing your abilities, developing your powers. And the thing is, is that, yes, development is powerful. Like being able to roll more dice or, or being able to mobilize more armies. Wonderful, wonderful power. But the thing is, is that you take that action. That's all you do. I mean, you just, you just give yourself, I mean, you have to, to give yourself that army. But you're just kind of resting on your laurels then and you're letting everybody else like move around and you know and theoretically they're attacking you and and yes you might be making yourself more powerful later but right now then that same turn that you did that all of a sudden the people have come in and taken a bunch of your territory and yeah sure you can mobilize more armies but now you don't have any armies to mobilize you know so it has like that kind of wait and see and that's where the negotiation and the game beyond the game comes in um i i really really enjoy games like this just because um it doesn't take a long time for there to be conflict every single one of these kingdoms are already right against each other this isn't a situation where you have these buffer zones where you can kind of build yourself up a little bit you know no i mean you're you're right at the gates right away from the get go and and so you need to be making friends quickly and this is this is one of those classic games where my buddy craig will immediately say right away from the beginning how about we all team up against Lance? <laughs> like, we, before we even, like, uh, anybody's even breathed, you know, or I've, I've even, like, even gotten through, like, the second or third rule explanation. I, I, you know, and that's all the rules, too, for this game, if you will. So, so there you go. Now, I, I would be remiss if I don't mention that in the Kickstarter there is actually a... Uh, uh, if they hit a certain goal, um, there is a, a another way to play the game that is called the Lich Queen. And um, what that is is that uh, basically there is uh, an undead army, uh, and there's these event cards that have to do with the Lich Queen that are entered in. There is an undead army uh, that you can fight that is very difficult to defeat, and if you lose to it, your armies actually become members of the undead army. Um and you, you actually, the player boards are double-sided. And on the other side, you will see that there is the Lich Queen sitting there. And then your, like, the powers actually do um, have, like, certain things. Like, normally, like, you you can't, um, uh, you can win ties against Liches with, with uh, opening of the civilization. Or you can, like, you have to roll a six uh, normally to, to, to kill a Lich army. But, like, here, like, if you get that, a five or a six will destroy and things like that. So, and you're not going for, um you're not going for victory points with this. Uh, yes, you're fighting the Lich Armies and things like that because they move and they, they consume your empire, so you need to be on your toes. And this doesn't mean you aren't attacking the other players either. This is just another thing you have to fight with. But you'll notice that there is actually a scoreboard on the top and the bottom of the player board there. And then what happens is that that's your influence. And so on the bottom part, the, the, on the agriculture, the agriculture line actually gives you influence points. And so the first person that can get to 40 points on influence will then win the game. And But once again, that is that balancing act where, yes, you'll be activating that, you'll be gaining victory points theoretically to win, but you have a situation where um, you still have to get your armies going and get your armies up and running and being able to actually defeat uh, the, the Lich Queen as she's like consuming your armies and eating them. Um, you know, it, it, it makes for a very difficult uh, task, if you will. If you're just sitting there like using agriculture, that's not going to work for you. So, so there you go. I mean, so that's like a stretch goal and, and I will the designer was kind enough to include that with the game and I played that and I, I that's a very enjoyable very I enjoy them both um as a flip of a coin as far as which one I'd rather play I mean it just depends, depends what kind of mood I'm in um the, with the Lich Queen you you, you kind of end up um you know a lot of like the, the the pervasive combat I guess isn't there as much for me um so it depends on if I want to have kind of more of a storyline and epic experience or if I want to have just brutal uh beat up on my friends type of time so both are good, both are a lot of fun, and I, I really hope that they reach that stretch goal so everybody can get that with their game as well. So, so there you go. That is Rain of Man. If you have any questions about the game, please uh, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those questions to the best of my ability. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I'm going to tell you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.